We previously represented trees using data abstraction. Now we will write a class. The abstraction hasn't changed. A tree is a root label and a list of branches. Recall that we have two sets of vocabulary to describe the same abstraction. The recursive description uses an analogy to wooden trees. And then there's a relative description, which uses family trees. Under the recursive description, a tree has a root label and a list of branches. The root label is three. Here's one branch. The other branch is here. Each branch is also a tree. A tree with zero branches is called a leaf. A tree starts at the root. So that's the root of the whole tree. That's the root of a branch. We also describe the locations within a tree by using the word node. Now our implementation of trees is going to describe labels and branches. But nodes are used to describe the characteristics of trees. How many labels appear in the whole thing is how many nodes there are. Each node has a label, which can be any value. A node can also be in relation to another node. This node with three is the parent of this node with two. This is the grandchild of this node. And the top node is called the root node. Recall that people often refer to the labels by their locations, so saying something like each parent is the sum of its children in this Fibonacci tree. One more piece of terminology that often arises is that a sequence of nodes from the root to a leaf is called a path. Here's a path, three, two, one, zero. Okay, time for the tree class implementation. A tree takes a label and a list of branches, which by default is empty. We set the label. We check that each branch is an instance of the tree class, and then set the branches to a list of the branches, where this makes a copy. Recall our data abstraction, which used the same terminology, lowercase tree instead of uppercase tree, and involved a little bit more work. Not only did we have to define the constructor, but also selectors. More importantly, we had to invent a representation. We decided that a tree would be represented as a list containing the label and whatever was in all of the branches. And then the selectors had to match the constructor. Those details are no longer necessary when we use the object system. We just declare what the attributes are for each instance of the tree class and we know how to access them using dot notation. So here's the implementation of a function that constructs a Fibonacci tree for Fibonacci number n at the root label. And it looks almost exactly the same as what we would write using the tree abstraction that we had before, except now we capitalize the word tree and we access the labels using dot notation. There's our tree class. We can construct a leaf. We can construct a tree. But it must be the case that the tree has a list of branches that are also trees. So that raises an error because we did not pass in a list of branches that are trees. But this would be fine. And this would be fine as well. Here we see the repr string for a tree. If we print the same value, we'll see all of the labels. Two at the root, and three and four at the roots of the branches. Here's our Fibonacci tree, and here's our old memoization function, which still applies in this case as well. I can construct fib tree with the fourth Fibonacci number at the root. It's hard to see in its repr string. But if I print it out, the stir string shows its structure. Three at the root, here's a branch, and there's that branch repeated. A Fibonacci tree for a larger number would be larger. Even though I'm using a class to represent this Fibonacci tree, I can still construct a very large tree using memoization, and it happens nearly instantly. However, if I print that out, it's going to take a long time 
because the printed representation of this tree has a lot of redundancy in it. So now Python's busy thinking about how to print this huge tree. Let's give it an easier one. Here we'll print fib tree for 28. Even though constructing the tree happens instantly, printing the whole thing out still takes a really long time. And there it goes. Processing a tree that's an instance of the tree class is almost identical to processing a tree using data abstraction. For example, if I want to write a function that returns a list of the leaves in the tree, it has the same structure as it would before. If tree dot is leaf, return a list containing the label of that leaf. Otherwise, we'll construct a list of all of the leaf labels, which appear in the branches. Instead of saying branches of the tree, I say tree.branches. And for each one, I'll extend my existing list with whatever leaves I find in B. So here's fib tree 8. The eighth Fibonacci number is 21. If I get the leaves of that tree, I'll get a list of ones and zeros, and the sum of those should also be 21. 